Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. I'm coming to you again from Aoyama Park next to Tokyo National Arts Center where it's been a very hot and sunny and humid day. Uh, 32 degrees today, uh, the hottest day of the year so far, uh, but I love it. Uh, I love it because when I got up this morning and I looked at the weather report, they promised rain from noon onward and thunderstorms later in the afternoon. Uh, happily, the weather report was wrong. There's been no rain and we may still have a chance of thunderstorms later, but at least I was able to spend some time out of doors today. We've had pretty much uh, two weeks straight of rain every single day. Not rain all day every day, but every day at least for a, a, some amount of time. And I, I don't like being cooped up inside all the time. I much prefer to be outside in the summertime when I have a chance. So uh, yeah, I'm glad finally that uh, we have a little bit of a, a break from the rain. The weather report was uh, of course incorrect and I hope it remains incorrect because uh, it promises rain every single day through next weekend. And between the time I've already spent indoors because of the weather and also because of the, the virus uh, issue earlier in the year, uh, I was hoping to spend a lot more time outdoors this summer. So uh, I hope that the weather stays nice. Uh, the heat and humidity haven't really uh, kicked into full strength yet and you can tell that because of how quiet it is in the background around me. The cicadas haven't come out yet. Uh, normally when the really hot weather begins to hit Japan, the cicadas start to tunnel their way out of the ground. They come up and they shed their skins and climb up in the trees and start making an amazing racket. And in August it's not possible to make a video from this park because it's just too noisy. The cicada noise is just deafening. Uh, it's the official sound of summer in Japan and if you watch Japanese television commercials, TV dramas or movies, uh, anything which is set in summer always has a backing track of the cicada noise in the background, you know, kind of to add to the, I guess, the summer dimension. So uh, I, I just have to enjoy the quiet and the good weather while I can. The heat and humidity will be the worst in the August and at the end of July. Uh, we are going to be escaping this for a short time because we're going to Hokkaido in about 10 days. My daughter can't wait. She's almost to the point where she's counting the hours. We'll be driving to the seaport and loading our car onto a ferry and then taking the ferry along the sea coast all the way up to Hokkaido. We'll be in the ferry all day and overnight to the next morning. Uh, supposedly the ferry has a nice restaurant and good food and a nice comfortable room for us to stay in and a play area for the kids. So it'll be a, a new experience for me here in Japan. And we'll be dropped off on the west side of Hokkaido and we will drive to Niseko, which is uh, famous for skiing and winter sports and also for being probably the least Japanese place in Japan. Uh, Niseko seems to be a hot spot or a, a place where uh, Europeans, Australians, and others tend to go for uh, for work or play. We don't have a lot of people uh, playing this summer for the obvious reasons, but we still have a lot of people up there working. And most of these are foreign workers from Australia and Europe and Canada and a handful from America. So we're looking forward to going up there and enjoying the, the cooler weather. I'll be uh, sending my bicycle uh, up there uh, before I go so I can have it to ride around. I'm looking forward to doing maybe a little bit of mountain biking uh, on the trails up there. I'm most looking forward to the food. Hokkaido is very famous for its seafood, especially its sushi. And uh, when we went skiing there last year, I didn't do any skiing because I was busy watching my daughter learn to ski. I didn't get a chance to do it myself, but uh, to make up for the lack of skiing, I got to enjoy a lot of good food. And I hope we get to enjoy uh, a lot more during our stay, uh, beginning uh, 10 days from now. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started on uh, the subject of today's video. And it is a medium format folding camera. Uh, in this case, it is the NKK Super Wester Wester 6. Uh, NKK is probably unfamiliar to 99% of you camera fans out there. Uh, it's uh, short for uh, the Nishida Kabushiki Kaisha, which uh, simply means uh, Nishida Company. Nishida means Westfield. Uh, most people in Japan have uh, names like that, place names, and Kabushiki Kaisha is the, the simple common name for most Japanese companies. Uh, on the boxes which were exported from Japan, the box would just say Nishida Optical on it. 
I, I got this camera with a lot of other cameras. Uh, I wasn't really interested in this camera. I didn't buy the lot because I, because this was included. The, the lot this came with included a Pentax MX, and that's the camera which I really wanted. And I ended up with three or four other cameras which came as a package deal with it. And uh, as I was taking them out and I unwrapped this one, I was quite surprised uh, at the quality of it. I like the very clean layout, the nice angles, and uh, the, the very high quality of the construction and the materials. Uh, this is quite an old camera dating from uh, you know, maybe the early or mid-1950s, and the metal has come out pr pretty well with no corrosion on it. The climate in Japan is not very kind to metal. Uh, between the humidity and heat and the salt air, which gets, seems to find its way throughout all the country, anything which can rust or corrode tends to rust and corrode rather quickly. And this camera shows no signs of any of that. Very well made. And also I noticed that the camera was covered with real leather, which is a kind of rare thing in Japan where uh, leather in those days was imported and when the exchange rate was, was as bad as it was during the, those days, quite expensive to import. So uh, all the signs of a really good and well-made camera. We'll go ahead and take a look at the features and functions and controls of the Wester 6 Super Deluxe or Super Wester camera. On the back here we have a couple of windows, and these are the counter windows. Uh, for shooting the 6x4.5 format you would use the bottom window, and when shooting the 6x6 format you would use the top window. And when you're rolling the film there are numbers on the back, paper back of the film, and you line those numbers up in the middle of the window to let you know when the uh, frame is correctly lined up, and to count from one to the end. You get a few extra frames in shooting the 6x4.5 format, but uh, recently the 6x6 format is much more popular. Unfortunately, this camera doesn't have the 6x4.5 uh, mask in the back, so it can only be used in the 6x6 format, but no, that's okay. Uh, I, I prefer 6x6 to 6x45 anyway. <clears throat> Going to the top of the camera, we have a dial on this side, which you can see my thumb and finger moving around. This is kind of a dummy dial. It doesn't turn. It's just screwed onto the camera with two screws. And on the top of it, we have a, a small dial on the inside, which does turn. And what you do is you turn this to, sh to select the kind of film you have loaded in the camera. So we have selections for color, uh, what we say here, uh, panochromatic, infrared, ortho, or empty. So that can remind you whether you have film or not, or what kind of film you have in it. Uh, next to that, we have the shoot amount of flash gun. Here we have the release button, which opens the camera. Over here we have the shutter button, and then we have the film winding knob, which works on kind of a ratcheting action, so you can't accidentally wind the film the wrong way. And on the back here, we have the viewfinder window. Uh, the Super Wester has an integrated viewfinder and rangefinder system, which makes focusing and composing very quick and easy. Uh, the viewfinder and rangefinder is quite large and easy to use, and uh, the rangefinder has really good contrast, so it's quite easy to focus with. Uh, to open the camera, you have to depress this top button, but often when you get one of these cameras and you push the button, nothing happens. Uh, this is because the, the bellows inside, which is made of leather, the bellows is kind of a thing which in, extends inward and outward. It kind of holds its shape. Normally, uh, when these cameras are newer or used frequently, the bellows helps to push the front open when you depress the lever. So, uh, in this, for this case, what I do uh, in the, on these cameras, I just hold the camera so the front of the camera is facing downward and I push the button and gravity tends to pull it open. In some cases, gravity may not be enough. You may need to push the button and kind of pull out on the door to open the front of the camera. And of course, here is the bellows, which I mentioned, which would help normally push the lens out. Uh, to the front here, we have the lens assembly, which has all the important controls. The first thing we have is this knob or tab on the top, which is what you push or pull to focus the camera. We have a focusing scale on the top, which is measured in feet, and behind that we have a depth of field scale, which will show you how much is foc in focus at any given range, depending on the aperture you have selected. Speaking of aperture, we have the aperture control uh, tab here. We have an aperture range of f3.5 to f22. On this side here, we have the socket for plugging your flash sync cord. And here we have the shutter uh, charging lever and just push the shutter button to release it. 
Uh, some medium format cameras, similar cameras, have a kind of lock system where in order to push the shutter button you have to turn to the next frame first. Uh, the Super Wester does not have this feature, so you have to be careful not to uh, take a double exposure. So immediately after you fire the shutter, make sure to wind to the next frame, so you don't accidentally take two images on a single frame. On the bottom here, the red uh, tab we have is a self-timer lever. A convenient feature which we find on the Super Wester, right here where I'm moving my finger, there's a set screw, and this is to allow you to adjust the infinity adjustment for the rangefinder. It's quite easy to adjust. Uh, the vertical adjustment is a little bit more difficult. You have to remove the top cover uh, to make the vertical adjustment. Uh, luckily, compared to some other similar cameras, the top cover is actually very easy to remove from the Super Wester. So if you have to adjust the rangefinder or you have to clean out the optics on the inside because they have dust or haze or whatever, uh, simply remove this screw here with uh, the two holes on it and remove uh, the black dial and you'll find two screws underneath. You remove the screws and the dial and the spacer comes off. On this side here there's a set screw on the winding lever and you simply remove the set screw and then turn off the knob by turning it clockwise. The threads are reversed on it and it comes off. And then there are two screws underneath. You remove those and the entire top cover lifts off and you can easily clean out the inside and you can also adjust the vertical adjustment on the rangefinder. And putting it back together again is quite easy. <clears throat> uh, to fold the camera, uh, focus it back to infinity to collapse the lens and we have two kind of uh, square parts on either side. Just pull those straight back and then close the door and the camera is folded up and ready to store. Uh, to load the film, it's quite easy. Lift up the tab here on the latch and open the door. And you can uh, drop your, put in a take-up spool on this side. There's a convenient uh, tap, I guess, knobs on the bottom to pull out, which allow you to install the spools or uh, rolls of film inside the back of the camera. Uh, and simply wind the film until you're the red or white arrow, whatever the, it happens to be on the film you're using, lines up more or less in the center. Then close the door and then open the window and simply wind the film until the number one appears in the exact center of this window and the camera is ready to fire. On the bottom of the camera we have a, a tripod socket located right in the middle, a standard quarter inch socket which is quite handy. Uh, looks like it might have a 3 8 as well. You might have, you know, if you can turn that out, you might have access to, eh, no, ah, never mind that. This, it's definitely just a quarter inch. Uh, one problem that I've seen on a couple of Wester, uh, Wester cameras, this one included, was that uh, the, one of these knobs had come loose. It had become unthreaded um, from the latch on the inside. And I tried to put it back with the spring inside and I couldn't get the threads to start. And then I realized that it had reverse threads. I put it on turning it the opposite way and it went back together and the camera's good to go. Uh, these are very interesting cameras. Uh, for over the last year or so, I've been selling a lot of twin lens reflex cameras which shoot in the 6x6 format. And the twin lens reflex camera is quite popular uh, because of uh, it's really easy to use and the design is really reliable and it's just really cool. Uh, there's a, a, a genuine appeal to TLR cameras which people really like. But uh, if you don't like TLR cameras but still want to shoot in a 6x6 medium format, a camera like the Super Wester is a really good choice. Uh, it has a pretty much the same lens which you'll find on a twin lens reflex camera. In this case it's a Wellcon 7.5 centimeter f3.5 lens. The standard lens for a twin lens reflex camera is usually a, a 75 millimeter or 80 millimeter lens so uh, this will give you pretty much the, the exact same results you would get from a twin lens reflex camera made with similar design and similar focal length. Uh, these are really uh, interesting cameras to shoot and these versions which have the integrated uh, viewfinder and rangefinder make composing and focusing uh, quite easy. And also because when you're shooting you can let, look directly through, through the viewfinder uh, at your subject, whereas the twin lens reflex camera you kind of have to look down through the top in order to uh, focus and compose. 
Uh, personally, I like both kinds of cameras. I have fun shooting with them a lot. And when the TLR cameras, I actually find those easier to shoot if I want to shoot from uh, something high, like I'm shooting over the top of people's heads. You can do that with a TLR camera in a way that you can't do with other cameras because you simply hold the TLR camera upside down and simply look through the viewfinder from underneath. And uh, it's one of the few cameras where you can actually uh, focus and compose uh, shooting over someone's head, something which isn't so easy to do with a camera like this or a regular uh, SLR camera. But anyway, uh, that's my video for today. I'll be listing this camera uh, shortly at my uh, new store, uh, japanvintagecamera.com. I'll also be listing it in my Etsy and eBay stores. Please check the description below the video for links to my stores. I plan to be uploading more videos soon, so if you're interested in vintage Japanese cameras or photography in Japan, uh, please subscribe so you can see my new videos. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.